One of the things that uh, I'm doing while I'm sitting here grinding, tossing in my head about this 194, 185, or 190 valve deal is I want to go ahead and set the entire port chamber and everything up for it. Now, some of the things, which of course is the chamber that really come in here and put a blistering decision on me about this, uh, is the fact that inside the port and the bowl area, you know, I've already done the bowls. What most people never pay attention to when they're porting is they never look at how much distance there is if you cut directly in center of the valve from this side over to here versus this side over to here, what I call the push rod side. Well, look how big and bulky that guide is, and then, I mean, look, you can't even, here you can put your whole finger, you can't even get the top of it in there. That is a major drawback. So what we want to do here is we don't want to chop into the wall because it's pretty thin. We want to do 80% of the material removal on the guide, which is digging on the bottom, coming up, and then we can move that wall over a little bit to get it to blend and lay in. Because if I'm going to go in here with the 194 valve, if I don't go in here and chop this up, and, and I can't emphasize this enough. If you guys are gung-ho on going to a 194 valve and you don't go in here and do what I'm getting ready to show you, which is not only bottlenosing the guide, but clearing a path for the air to come out this way into the unshrouded part of the chamber, I can't tell you how much you're killing yourself. All you're doing is putting a big valve in there and going, golly, I got big 350 valves on a 305. Ain't that just dandy? And all you're getting is this bull crap look of a big shiny valve in a hole that ain't got nothing behind it to back it up. So, I'm going to let you guys look in on me here. Let me set the camera up. And I'm going to let you watch how I go in there. I'm using a certain diameter cylinder with a rounded top. I'm not going to go into diameters. Part of my secret is the diameter of the different cutters I use and how it cuts different depths, different thicknesses with the cutter shapes. So... I'm going to reveal all that to you soon on how I use the math, the cutter sizes, and everything to lay out my depth cuts. But let's take a look at how I'm going to attack this. And, and then we'll do it. Alright, here we go. Now, remember, I am going down, but I'm going to be pulling toward the guide. Constantly toward the guide. All right, look at the first cut. See how that laid in there? You can still see some of the casting. And you can't go all the way down at once. You go halfway down. Now, I'm going to come in here again. Then I'm going to pull in. Now, <laughs> I ain't even got to the bottom yet. Look at that. All right, now I'm going to come over here in the area where the trench is. I'm going to start pulling the wall back.
All right, the reason, the reason I have to do that, guys, is to get rid of some of that trench overhang so I can go in there deeper. Now I'm going to really pull in on the guide. Look at that, even with all that cutting and how I pulled it, you can still see them little speckles of casting. I ain't even got down there. And that's a considerable amount of thickness. Okay, now I'm gonna go on in there now. I wanted to show you how I use the cylinder, pull toward the guide, chew it down until I get that about level. But you have to stop and gnaw on this a little bit where you feel that hump so you can get in here again. Once again, it's like trimming and painting. All right, I'm going to back up a little bit and work on it, and then uh, I'm going to show you how I switch to the big flame to chew on this part. It's that part required a cylinder. Once again, the use of multiple shape bits to do specific jobs is the key to this situation. All right.